are obviously a lot of plants in Astroneer, as you can plainly see right here. However, the thing about most of these plants is that they suck. In fact, every single one of those over there suck, and the only thing that's actually good in this game regarding plants would be the Fractal Rose, and that is, of course, what we're going to be talking about today. But what actually is the Fractal Rose? Well, it is a plant that allows us to get bites fully automatically. But how do we get this thing to begin with? Well, there's actually two different ways we can obtain this plant. Now, the easier of the two methods is to come to Novus, which is the only planet to my knowledge that it actually spawns on, and actually collect the plant itself. Now, something you need to know about this is that it only drops one seed ever. It always only drops one seed. It never drops more or less than one seed. So however many of these you want, you better get that many seeds before you leave because you're only going to have that many plants because the seeds will never multiply. The second method is a lot more late game, but it's a lot easier to get a ton of them once you're in the late game this way. So I'm just going to show it to you. It is by using fault finders in the trade platform. So as you can see, a single fault finder will give us two hybrid rose seeds. And the reason it's called hybrid rose seeds is because that's technically a different seed than the fractal rose seed. But long story short, it's the exact same plant. So this is a fractal rose seed essentially, and you can get those out of the trading platform instead of going to Novus in the late game, which is recommended if you are in the late game. But now that all that's out of the way, it's time to discuss how we actually get bites with this thing. So as I mentioned earlier, when you harvest this, it drops a single seed. Now the fact that it drops a single seed, no more no less, is actually the reason we are able to automate this thing, but we'll get into that later. What you need to know right now is that in addition to a seed, sometimes this thing will drop also a research sample, as you can see here, and obviously this is how we get the bites when we are automating the system. Now earlier I said the fact that this thing drops one seed every single time, no more no less, is the reason we can automate this. And the reason for that is because we're going to be using a proximity repeater in order to grow these plants automatically. So as you can see, if a proximity repeater goes off, then all the seeds in its vicinity will be planted automatically. Now if there was if each of these plants dropped more or less than one seed on average, then the proximity repeater would either cause the population to shrink or to grow, and both of those is bad because if the population shrinks, then eventually we will have no plants, but if it grows, then eventually there will be so many that it's too laggy to actually use, and they would just keep on and keep on multiplying. So, it may seem sucky that we can't get more plants from our plants because they don't drop any more seeds, but actually that's a good thing because it means we can use the proximity repeater forever. Also, yes, we don't want to have to walk over and activate the proximity repeater just like this, like I've been doing this whole time, so that's why we will also use a delay repeater, because a delay repeater will automate the proximity repeater, while the proximity repeater automates the growing of the plants. So, put the delay repeater on a full 25 because that's still pretty fast and activate the proximity repeater and then every once in a while it will both harvest it will both harvest and plant the seeds because yes it does both the proximity repeater will harvest the plants and it will plant them and it will also uh, research the samples that drop out of it too, so it does everything for you, this is all you need. However, there is a little bit more to it than that. Because as you can see right here, the research samples kind of fly off. Now this isn't like a one-off thing, they like they fly off all the time. It happens constantly when you're using this method. Every time it harvests the plants just about, the research samples will go away so far that it cannot research them the next time it activates. So basically you're just planting the plants just to plant the plants, and you're rarely ever actually getting research. But there is a solution to this because, I mean, yeah, look, you can see it, it's happening right now. Both of them, they went out of range and they cannot be harvested by the proximity repeater. So there is some proof right there. But yes, there is a solution to this. What we can do is first of all, shut this off so it's not causing any shenanigans for us while we're trying to solve this problem and then get rid of these because why would we want those in our way? This is kind of a mess. Probably shouldn't have started recording yet. But anyways, what we do is we bury our stuff. It's literally that simple because think about it. If we bury this and then cover it up, the research things and the seeds and nothing can go anywhere. They will all be stuck in a single spot, and then, as a bonus point, it'll, like, be out of our way, so we don't have to look at it or worry about it. So what you want to do is make sure there's enough space so that when the plants, like, become seeds, that the seeds don't clip through the sides and then go into, like, nothingness underground, and you want to make sure that it's also not too much room, because if you put the proximity repeater in here, and the amount of room you leave is bigger than its range, then obviously the seeds or the research samples, rather, can still get out of range of it, so that could cause problems. So put however many seeds down here you want, then activate it like this, and then bury it like it was never there to begin with, and it will start researching automatically. I'm gonna cut till when it does that, instead of making you sit here and wait with me. So boom, just like that, son. It researches, no problem at all, and it's, oh, it's just still going. And I don't know if I showed them growing on camera yet, but they grow, like, really fast. It's like... 25, 30 seconds for them to grow. You may think based off other games that it takes like 
five, 10 minutes for these things to grow. If you look at this right here, you can visibly see this thing growing. Just watch it go. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. That is like extreme speed right there. So they grow fast. And yeah, I mean, I'm getting bites right now on screen, even before I'm done talking here. So taking everything into consideration, this is a pretty good method for getting bites, right? Uh, well, actually, no. And for one main reason, that's because it is overshadowed by the Glacio Bite strategy. Basically, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there are little cave rock bites or whatever you would want to call them in Glacio, and they respawn. Now, even though they respawn, much slower than these plants grow, they respawn all by themselves. You don't have to set this up at all, which means it's very early game friendly. But what's even more important about the Glacial Bites strategy is that Glacial Bites respawn and get researched by the proximity repeater even when you're nowhere near render distance. You can be on a different planet. No matter where you are, the Glacial Bites strategy does Glacial Bites things, and it works no matter what. Whereas the plants here, for some reason, when you go out of render distance, they do not research, they do not grow, nothing happens unless you are nearby to the plant strategy. So the Glacial Bites strategy is kind of like just a slightly, actually a very much so better version of this, unfortunately. So, yeah, I guess this video is just informational, not really... Such useful stuff now that I think about it. I just wasted all of your time, and that's funny. So, I mean, you know, get wrecked. That was a checkmate, and now you should subscribe even though I directly insulted you to your face after wasting your entire time on this video. This counts as an outro, I guess, so goodbye. Goodbye.